Hi, I'm Peter Brenton. I'm, I'm speaking today about making the most of your citizen science data. Uh, this is from the perspective of Australia's largest biodiversity data aggregator. So for those who don't know, the Atlas of Living Australia is one of a number of facilities for re uh, funded by the federal government to support research. We're in a set of infrastructure facilities and we are hosted by the uh, CSIRO. The ALA, as, as an aggregator, enables more effective research and more efficient research by uh, making more research-ready data easily accessible, freely accessible to accelerate uh, research programs. But it also helps to inform better policy, better management of, of uh, our natural assets and also uh, better community participation, participation and uh, connection with Australia's biodiversity. <clears throat> We've developed a number of, of tools and uh, uh, digital capabilities to support the, the database that uh, is underpinned. And this ranges from a set of tools for data capture, uh, for discovery, for visualisation and also for analysis. And together these services and tools uh, enable researchers and government and that land and natural resource managers and community and industry to uh, to access this information and engage better with the biodiversity and uh, and also to achieve better management outcomes. In terms of how we've been supporting citizen science, uh, this we, we've been uh, providing infrastructure capabilities to support citizen science since 2010. And uh, we also provide a number of, of you know, support services, I guess, in, in data management and also data sharing and mobilisation. One of the obvious uh, facilities is the Australian Citizen Science Project Finder, which uh, is hosted on our flagship survey infrastructure called BioCollect. And um, this provides a searchable catalogue of projects uh, for citizen science projects in Australia. And is essentially a place where people can can put your projects that you're running we also provide other infrastructure support we provide advice and data modeling uh, around data modeling and standards and data capture and and also data mobilization <coughs> for, for groups and individuals and so on that are running projects um, we also partnered with iNaturalist to uh, set up the australian node of iNaturalist with and uh, we are members of the uh, international um, iNaturalist network and um, we partnered with uh, Digivol, uh, sorry with the Australian Museum in uh, about 2013 I think it was to develop the Digivol platform which is a, a crowdsourced digitization platform for uh, specimen digitization, notebooks, field data sheets and camera trap information. We also provide input significant amount of input actually into global standards for citizen science uh, and the development in particular of the PPSR core uh, standard which is a standard called public participation in scientific research uh, and is intended as a, a core data schema and standard for uh, citizen science projects across all domains. We provide communication support for many projects. We are providing feature uh, articles in our blog posts and uh, we reach over 70,000 um, uh, subscribers to the ALA and communicating all sorts of uh, interesting achievements in bio biodiversity, uh, citizen science. And we also provide some financial assistance and, uh, and sponsorship as a sponsor for this event, plus also previously other events. So why would you share data? Well, um, this image is just an example, but uh, it shows that half a million records held in the ALA across 53 different data sets for uh, the Australian kookaburra. Two subspecies of the Australian kookaburra, in fact, uh, and the map shows colours for the different distributions of the different subspecies. Um, this sort of map is not, of a, not possible without aggregating data. No one data set in its own right would actually provide a map like this. 
Um, and many of the, of the sources of data into this, uh, this sort of view actually come from uh, citizen science sources. So citizen science is, is a really important contributor to uh, the occurrence data that we feature in the ALA and fuels the research that, that can do further analysis on this sort of information. There are some challenges though. For a, for a long time, uh, trust and credibility have been, um, you know, significant issues for, for citizen science uh, uh, data. These, these issues are improving, but they still exist. And it's important to be aware of that. Credibility is a function of the quality, uh, perceptions of quality, the reliability of the information. That's how consistent it is really. Um, the expertise that's uh, been put into collecting it and, and trust in that expertise and also trustworthiness of the data itself. So, um, and, and together those, uh, those factors have over time contributed to perceptions in the user community for, for data of, um, you know, citizen science data lacking credibility and therefore um, being difficult to trust. And we, we know that that situation is not always true. And so there are a number of things that we can do, which I'll cover shortly. There's also a lack of data sharing within the citizen science space. Uh, this is also improving, but uh, it still exists, uh, particularly when platforms uh, and infrastructures that are used don't, uh, don't readily share data and sharing data is not usually front of mind. So that, that's something that uh, we'll look a little bit more at. And, uh, and also the use of standards. If it's difficult to uh, combine data with, with other data sets, uh, it can also impede the sharing and uh, access to data. So what sort of things can we do to, to solve this sort of credibility problem? Um, first of all, there's uh, data set level information. This is the metadata that describes the actual record set. And the sorts of things that downstream users want to be able to determine when they look at data sets is uh, where it's come from and how it was collected, what sort of methodology was used, what sort of equipment, how, how consistently was, uh, were the methods applied, uh, who, who collected and how accurate it is, and what sort of validation and management processes have been used to uh, verify the, the information. Also, whether there's any known biases um, and whether they're allowed to use it, one, under what conditions, and also how to cite and reference the information. So the metadata describes all of these things. If it's not properly described, then it makes it difficult for downstream users to, to um, be able to use the, these data sets. At the record level itself, so this is individual observations and uh, associated information, um, information about the accuracy and precision of particular aspects of it. You know, how accurate is the identification or the spatial distribution, the, 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 the spatial resolution of a particular record, and uh, whether it's, it's temporally, so time accurate or not. Uh, how consistent were the methods applied in selecting, uh, in, in creating the data, and, uh, you know, what sort of formats apply and so on. There's, there's a number of things that we can do uh, to improve credibility. These are the sorts of things that people are interested in when they go to use data. So some of the things that uh, that we can do um, and that we have control over are things like um, database level mechanisms, validation and verification processes for, for quality assurance and quality control. Uh, things like technical technological aids that are built into databases and platforms and so on at the data level um, we, we have, say, validation rules and, and business rules that uh, drive, um, you know, what you can and can't do within the system. Um, range constraints and vocabularies of, of, uh, of standard terms that you can select off lists and so on um, that make it easier for, for users, but also helps to standardise data and make it easier to, to use downstream. Things like GPS coordinates, using uh, devices to capture co GPS coordinates accurately and using image metadata extraction and pre-populating things, uh, attributes from that. There's lots of things that you can do at the technology level, um, whether training programs are in place, um, what sort of workflows and, and uh, 
templates and methods and protocols are applied. So these are frameworks that, uh, that apply for collecting data. Obviously, we've spoken about credibility and metadata, and also there's human dimensions in there as well around contributor recognition and attribution and licensing and so on. So when you when you select IT platforms uh, and infrastructure to record data within, <coughs> with, you know, for your projects, um, it's useful to consider things like how comprehensive and standard standardised the metadata is, whether it's actually even collecting the metadata. If it's not, then perhaps choose something that does, so that it can make your um, data more more um, usable downstream. Um, choose systems perhaps that have, have good data quality and data management capabilities and also that apply FAIR data principles. We'll cover FAIR in just a moment, but um, the, these are all important things for being able to share data and make it accessible and usable downstream. Um, and also there are very cost effective IT solutions around that can do these things and, and uh, it's worth sort of looking into those. So in terms of database configuration uh, considerations, uh, FAIR principles include things that are uh, aspects of making projects and data findable. So uh, registering the data and the projects in searchable catalogs, such as the uh, Australian Citizen Science Project Finder, is a good way to make your project discoverable by others, but it's also um, uh, an effective way to make your data more accessible as well. Use fully fully described metadata, uh, and making that sort of attractive, make your project attractive to people uh, through the way you describe it, the images you associate attached to it, uh, to really promote what you're doing, and and also to make it interesting to other people. And and the more accurate you can make that, the better. In terms of accessibility, open data is uh, open data and open access to the keys, and um, that includes things like well, obviously having a, a sharing sort of uh, approach to the way you do things, uh, but also using application programming interfaces (APIs) uh, to allow machines to be able to talk to each other, so external machines to be able to talk to your database, and vice versa. Uh, and also using open licensing, such as Creative Commons licensing, where um, it, it reduces the constraints on uh, downstream users being able to access and use your data. Um, interoperability, this is about systems being able to talk to each other and share information across networks between the systems. So this, uh, for, for systems to be interoperable, we need standards. They need to know uh, how to exchange information between each other and data standards uh, enable that process. We use a, a, a standard in biodiversity world called Darwin Core, DWC, and uh, Darwin Core is an international standard for sharing biodiversity occurrence data and a lot of other associated information. The Atlas of Living Australia uses this standard, as does the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, and we share information between those platforms. BioCollect also applies Darwin Core and, and PPSR Core and enables sharing between platforms on the basis of those standards. I mentioned control vocabularies before, that, that allows for effective sharing and, uh, and also fully described metadata um, and making things reusable it's all about the metadata in a lot of ways, making making it for discovery, using standardised and controlled vocabulary so that everyone knows what each other are talking about. So just to summarise, uh, the ALA has been a major contributor to Australian citizen science for many years uh, and will continue to do so for some time to come. Yeah, when you consider what to do with your data, uh, the, the notion of sharing makes it uh, more valuable I guess to uh, to more people uh, it adds value to more people and and also helps to improve the conservation and management of species by feeding into bigger data sets that allow for more effective analysis um, properly describing your metadata improves credibility and makes it more usable by others and also choosing tools which integrate uh, with data aggregators uh, makes sharing much more efficient and easy and just streamlines the whole process uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, for your interest in this subject.